Hi, you guys. How is everyone? Um, I recently did some shopping and that included six Vogue patterns. Um, so today I thought I would show you the patterns that I got, sort of the line of thinking I had when I got them, what I might make them from, and maybe inspire you guys to make something similar or maybe even the exact same thing. I don't care. We can twinsy it out if you want. Um, Vogue is not normally like a pattern company that I like buy six patterns from. Um, my style is not necessarily Vogue. <laughs> Vogue tends to be a little bit too elevated for my everyday life. Like if I'm going to be going to like a gala or like a really like ritzy glitzy lunch or something yes vogue all day long but like i don't do those things very often but i did find some vogue patterns that leaned into my aesthetic of like basic elevated basics essentially i'm also finding myself um gravitating toward like one big statement piece i'm i'm feeling very called to that right now i think for a while i went a little bit like I just want to blend in <laughs> um, and not stand out at all. And now I'm feeling like maybe I'm ready to crack open that door a little bit. So um, some of this stuff is going to represent that, hopefully. Um, the very first one is an oldie but goodie. It is Vogue 9258, copyright 2017. Okay. And I just loved the proportions of this one here. You do get the top and the pants. And I especially loved the um, drama of the top. There's What you can't see is that right here, there's actually a gore on both sides. So there's lots of volume, but the volume doesn't just come from making it like more of an A-line. It's not just trapeze, it's like, trapeze but shape but movement and all of those things together so it's a really you know advanced drafted advancedly drafted pattern that to the naked eye most people wouldn't see anything about it but we know that whenever you draft patterns this way it's going to be really flattering even though there's that much volume does that make sense um, the fabric recommendations for this are crepe, cotton, shirting, chambray, linen blends, and I've got a ton of that. So if you look behind me and all my videos or most of them, this is my fabric stash. Shh, don't say anything about my fabric stash. That's between me and my bank account. Okay. <laughs> On the left is all my wovens and they go from lightweight down to heavyweight. So you can see in this like middle section, I've got quite a bit to choose from. And I think that the reason why I'm not grabbing those and I'm buying fabrics instead is because I don't have the patterns that that call for that type of fabric. I think I bought those when I was living in Charleston and in Charleston pre-pandemic, it was very much fit and flare 24 seven. I was wearing fit and flare dresses all the time. I loved making them, I loved wearing them. Yes, they're super flattering on me, um, but we have grown out of that nearly completely like I see them now as being a little bit like young and immature and like I don't know I just I'm not a fan not a fan anymore I don't know that I'll ever make another flare <laughs> dress again maybe one day I made it for the right occasion but I mean I was wearing them every day all the time and so now that I'm not wearing and of course those call for those types of like you know midway fabrics and so now that I'm not making those anymore and wearing those anymore, those all those fabrics that those were, were the ideas that I had for them are just sitting there. So getting ideas like this um, in my pattern stash, where I mean, what's the what is the fabric requirement on the top B? Because I really do like the buttoned version. I mean, I like them both, but the buttoned version is really cute too. I mean, the buttoned version is the cutest, I think. Um, B calls for one and three eighths yards of fabric, so. I got plenty of that um, with a little scrap left over to make matching outfits for the dogs or something. You know what I mean? Um, so this was a good necessity, you know, something that fills a hole in my stash. Um, I have a long, long, long been fan of Rachel Comey and her regular clothes, like in her store, but also what she does with Vogue. And this one was no exception. I think when you guys watched the 
um, first impression video of this. I said, I'm getting that, no question about it. I just love the proportions. I love how cool it is. I love, like, she just looks very trendy without trying at all. She's just like above caring and trying, but she looks so cool. It's like the, the whole, um, who does this really well? Like Kendall Jenner. She's like, I could care less about fashion, but you know, if you know, you know, she cares about it immensely and thinks about a lot, spends a lot of time thinking about what she's going to wear every day. But when she steps out, it looks like she just casually threw all that together and it looks so amazing. So that's what I feel like this is. This is, um, very loose fitting pullover top with draped shoulders, funnel neckline, long sleeves, pleated into cuffs, back zipper, and shaped hemline. So there's a lot happening in this seemingly very basic top. Um, and then the shorts are semi fitted through the hip, have patch pockets in the front and back, exposed side zipper with button and buttonhole at waistband. So again, these little shorts that you can see here have a really cool, I mean, the shorts in and of themselves alone are super, super cool. Um, love that they did it in a matching set. I will do that too. I'm debating on a solid or a print. I think I could do some really cool stuff. Again, well, you can't really see the, cause these call for midway cotton twill, chambray, and then denim, but denim, like not chambray, not lightweight denim, like chambray, but lightweight denim, like, you know, six ounces or something, but on the left hand, this side over here, down toward the bottom, those are all of those fabrics. So I have some cool ones that are like curtains from Goodwill, for example, um, that would definitely make a statement. Um, can you see the orange and white stripe that's right there? That would be really, really cool. I also have, um, I don't know, just a whole bunch of really fun things over there that I don't know if I got them to make jackets. I don't know what the plan was, but it definitely wasn't this. And now it might be. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited to make this one. This is going to happen soon because it's the time of year to wear this. Well, not today. It's like 40 degrees here, but, um, in a few weeks, it'll be fifties and sixties on the regular. And this is perfect for that. So excited about that. And then let me make sure that I got all this. Yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, then you know that I have been on a bit of a tear about knits and granted, yes, my knit column is very full, but I don't know for some reason it's not full of the things it's not the, the fabrics are, it's the same thing with the wovens really. Like I got those fabrics very specifically to make fit and flare knit dresses probably. Um, and every time I go to make something, none of those call out to me like at all. So I thought, okay, I'm going to buy a bunch of knit patterns because I was even going through my knit pattern stash and was kind of uninspired by that as well. So this is what I got from Vogue knit pattern wise. First up is this. Okay. This is Vogue. Oh, I had to buy the, I had to buy the display version. I hate, why did they do that? That seems so silly. Even the people in the store are like, yeah, we don't know why they do that. Um, I guess because they only print so many of those, but it's Vogue 1929. 1929. Go back in. And it's, it's a statement, right? Like this feels, I'm not 100% sure on this, probably because the length of the tunic. I do like the idea of this pant though, just with a different top, but I'm obsessed with this. Like, I don't know where this with knee high boots or even my thigh high boots. I want to, I want to dress it down a little bit, which is what they tried to do here. Um, but I'm very much into the like kind of showing off the figure a little bit. I'm not really afraid of showing my curves anymore. I don't know if that's cause I turned 40 and like, I'm just like, who cares? Um, but I just think this is both very, it's chic. It's sexy. It's all the things wrapped up into one. I just really, really love that. And the um, fabrics for this are 35% cross grain. So that's all of your jerseys, rib knits, ponty knits. I mean, there's just so many that you can wear from them. And with the, with the amount of 
like the different types of knit fabrics that we're able to buy online these days, um, I feel very confident that I could make this in a, in a very suitable fabric. I probably even have something in my stash already. Um, knits are over here. I mean, I don't know if you can see that blue and green stripe. That would be perfect. That's sort of like a lightweight ponte. It feels a little early 2000s because I was going to make it into a pencil skirt. Remember J. Crew did that? Remember the green? Like it's like green and navy blue striped knit pencil skirt. Remember that? I mean, like I feel like everybody and their brother had one. And then you wore them with the chambray button down shirt tucked in and then the big chunky necklace. Remember? Um, so I got that fabric at that time thinking I would make that and then I never did because I was like, no, I'm not, no, everybody already has that. I want to make something new and different. So it stayed there thinking that maybe like it would come back around again, like trends come back around. So we were creeping up to the nineties are coming back. So the two thousands are next. So we'll see, um, what becomes of that. But, um, let's see, I have, yeah, I just have a lot of interesting fabrics in there. They're not all like this one where it's like, I don't know what they use. This almost feels like a sweater knit. So they're not all like sweater knits. They're not all this lightweight. Um, I do have to be mindful of this drape, but I, I think something is going to, there's also like a, you can't see it probably, but there's a black and white. There's a black, it, it's like black background with like white, like do, 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 little blobs little but they're similar in shape um all over it that would be really easy i don't know i have to throw some things on my dress form and see what a full you know head to toe almost um not cut up in any way looks like before i cut this one but this feels like what i'm gonna be for the next 20 years like, I still want to be like the hot, sexy grandma. Well, I'm not actually going to be a grandma, though, because I don't have any kids. But you know what I mean? The hot, sexy um, AARP member. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next is a bodysuit. Bodysuits are here, and they're not going anywhere. Um, so this is Vogue's version. This was from 2018. One for every season, right? Really easy, straightforward. You can make this from a zillion fabrics. This one is 75% stretch, so we are going for the more lightweight drapey, but you could always size down and then go with the less stretch. Wait, size up and go with less stretch. Yeah. Um, let's see. So they're just really calling for jersey interlock. Wait, I lied. I lied. I lied. The bottoms are, they're super stretchy everything else the top is 35 percent stretch so 75 percent percent stretch down here all of your jerseys like your little underwear fabrics and then this one up here is 35 percent jersey and interlock so again all the rib knits i mean really anything from in the top cubby down those first two cubbies would be perfect speaking of which i also got this bodysuit how stunning is she? Um, this is Vogue 1923. And I just love that shoulder detail. I feel like that with wide leg jeans, that with flares, that with um, pencil skirts. I mean, you can really dress it up or dress it down. This was around the holidays last year. So it got a velvet treatment, but there, um, it's really just any 75% stretch for the whole thing. There's no separation. Here's the line drawings. There's no separation between the bodice and the bottoms. You could put one, you could do exactly like they did here and separate it if you wanted to, but uh, this one does not have that naturally. Um, so you're looking at rayon spandex, cotton spandex. Um, again, rib knits would be a really good choice. I mean, 75% stretch is pretty stretchy. Um, I wonder why. I wonder how, you would think that it would be less stretched so that this stays on your shoulders well. I don't know, I might mess around with that a little bit and go down to like a 50% and see what happens with fit. Um, but yeah, it's just really elegant, but it could also be dressed down too, you know? So that's gonna happen. And then lastly, another sort of out of the box choice for me, you guys might think, is Vogue 1913. 
I talked about this a little bit in my Joanne fabric haul video that I just posted, but these little like one piece knit fitted jumpsuits are everywhere, like everywhere. Everybody is grabbing them up. And at first I was like, I could just never like a cat suit really. But I decided, you know what? There must be something about it or else everyone wouldn't be just like buying them all out of stock. So I got one off of Amazon. It's long sleeves, has thumb holes and just like a long comes down to the ankle. I was like, I've never felt better. <laughs> I felt like unstoppable. <laughs> um, that said, it is a little bit tricky to wear because I'm not wearing it outside just like that. I mean, if you do, if you have that amount of confidence, by all means, go for it. I just don't want, I don't, I don't, no, I don't want to wear it by itself. Um, I love the idea of it with a long blazer or a long cardigan, super easy. Um, I love the idea of it with a cropped sweatshirt, great. Um, and then you can even throw like sweatpants on underneath it or over it and then have like a, you know, tank top sweatpants situation. Um, in the winter time, you know how people wear like black tights and then like a black turtleneck and a sweater over it? You could do that, but just one piece instead of the two separate leggings and tank top. Um, and, and call me crazy, but I love the stirrups. I think the stirrups are really cool. I saw who was it and where maybe like somebody like Mariah Carey or Paula Abdul, someone of that like <laughs> demographic and they were wearing them and rocking them. And I just thought that was the coolest. So uh, obviously the stirrups, you can again, dress up or dress down. You can, you know, have them into your, your heel if you want. That's not the vibe I'm gonna go for, I don't think. Um, but even if you warm in a boot, it just covers it up and just keeps the legging inside the boot. It kind of just makes sense. Um, so the fabrics on this one for B are again, four-way stretch knits, 75% on the cross grain, rayon spandex, cotton spandex. But there's so many more fabrics that you can use for something like this. Um, even the 75% cross grain is a little bit um, flexible because some of these compression fabrics will stretch out that much and have great recovery at the same time so that you feel like super snatched. You know what I'm saying? So I really am happy with what I got in terms of filling holes in my stash and also staying current and staying on trend. That's something that's very important to me just personally for my personal style um, as it continues to evolve. I mean, you guys have had this channel for like 13, 14 years, maybe longer than that. So you really have seen me. If you've been here from the beginning, you've seen me go through it, okay? So this is where we are now. And I feel like I'm dressing the best I ever have in terms of uniqueness and also like what feels good and looks good at the same time. If you've made any of these, I would love to know how it went, um, how the sizing went, how, what fabric you used, all of that stuff. Um, so that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.